Don't say it. Don't say it. I'm not going to say it. Don't say it. <sighs> I'm going to say it. Ladies and gentlemen. My God, that felt good finally. Hello and welcome. I'm really excited to be bringing you kind of a different episode today. In today's episode, we're going to be going over the best flyers to use for PvP, how to use them, and some little tips along the way. Nowadays, PvP servers on Ark are pretty brutal, and probably the most common time you're going to come across someone is in the air. Now, if you're not careful in these situations, fights can be over before they've even started. So this is aimed to try and help some of you guys out who maybe aren't quite as confident on PvP servers. So we've got a lot of information to get through, and not a lot of time, so I really hope you enjoy this video, and let's get straight into it. The Pteranodon. These guys are arguably still the way to go when you first start off in this game. They're an extremely capable PvP flyer. They're pretty strong for what they are. They're also very agile and pretty easy to use. For those of you that play on a laggy console, it's probably one of the easiest things to use. It's definitely not the fastest PvP dino on this list, granted, but I'd take a Pteranodon any day. It's a weird thing to say. Pteranodons can pick small dinos, or more to the point in this list, people. Picking on a Pteranodon can feel quite difficult at first. You'll notice that unlike most flies, it won't pick instantly as you press the button. On the animation, his legs will almost come up to his body and then drop all the way down. As they drop down, they'll meet in the middle. The difficult part about this is that you need to try and time it so that whatever it is you're trying to pick up, you hit it as his legs get to the lowest point. Some people argue that Pteranodons are very glitchy when trying to pick people. They'll say that you'll pick your enemy, you'll start flying up into the sky, then all of a sudden the person they've picked has glitched back to where they were before. For this reason, when you pick someone, you need to try and be accurate, and as you pick them, take off instantly, don't force them into the ground, because that can be what's making the person glitch back to their previous position. Now apart from its picking ability, the other thing you're going to use a Pteranodon for mainly is its C-spin attack. It's useful because its C-spin attack will do a lot more damage than its standard bite attack, but wait! Is more, there's a more common use for these C-spin attacks. So you've just picked someone. Great success! But what can you do now? People carry parachutes. If you drop them, they'll just parachute, right? Well, once you've dropped the person you're fighting with and they parachute, you can get above them and C-spin them down towards the ground. If your spin hits them, it will knock them pretty far and pretty fast. And when they hit the ground, they'll take full damage. If you do this right, it's probably going to kill them. If not, at least it's going to take a lot of health from them. This can be a difficult thing to master, especially on Ark's laggy servers. So it's something that comes with practice, but once you master it, you can take out people a lot more geared up than you are. Now you have got to be careful on these guys. These guys don't have a lot of stamina to start with. God, that was difficult to say. Stamina to start with. Just, 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 just. Uh. <clears throat> Picking and C-spinning will take stamina. A lot of it. A low-level Tranodon may only be able to C-spin once before it's out of stamina. They also won't have a lot of weight, probably less than you. So if you're going to use one of these guys, you need to be travelling light and only bring the essentials with you. They're very easy to tame, however, with just a simple bowler and a crossbow or two to the face. And that's why they're so popular, they're so easy to get. That, coupled with some of their OP PvP benefits, is the reason that these guys are one of the most used flyers in PvP. The Griffin. The winged, four-legged, devil's child. Look at the eyes on it. One of, if not the strongest flyer to have during PvP. These lion eagles are extremely capable. They have the usual ability to pick. This is more instant when compared to a Pteranodon, and you don't need to be quite so accurate. Their normal attack is a claw swipe that will deal a moderate amount of damage. However, Griffins have a dive ability, makes them extremely fast, and can make travelling what would normally feel like a huge map a bit of a doddle really. And that's not even their best part about their ability to dive. So whilst diving on a Griffin, you'll get a massive melee buff. That means if you use this swipe attack while you're diving, instead of hitting these rookie numbers like 70, <laughs> you're going to be hitting more like 500s. And that's just on a normal decent level griffin. These guys can get leveled to hit a lot more. And that, as well as their blister and speed, is what makes them so effective in PvP. Now these guys are a little bit harder to control than Tyranodons. They're obviously a lot faster, but they're not quite as agile. They're still pretty agile for Aslan with a beak and wings. Their speed also allows you to get in and out of situations very fast, and away from danger fast if you have to. So everything has to have a downside. A big downside to the griffin is that you can't equip it with a saddle. This means that you can't give your griffin any extra protection because saddles obviously give armor. This means you've got to be careful because a good comp bow or shotgun could take out a low level griffin in just a couple of shots. Griffins also aren't breedable. That means what you tame is kind of what you get. If you've got a bad stat in a certain area, you've got to deal with it or get another one. The wyverns. We'll start with up until recently, the three main wyverns. 
You can get these wyverns from stealing eggs from wyvern trenches. You then have to hatch the eggs and raise them from babies. These wyverns all have the ability to be ridden. You can also pick on each of these wyverns and use a normal bite attack, but each has their individual special skill as well. We'll start with, in my opinion, the least effective, the fire wyvern. Just like a griffin, these guys don't need a saddle to ride. This is good because you don't have to craft a saddle, but again, you can't give them any protection from damage. It's not so much PvP related, but wyverns can pick up a lot larger dinos. Once picked, wyverns have the ability to bite people once they're in their grasp. You may find you need to sprint your wyvern forward as you bite to hit whatever you're picked. Now wyverns really aren't agile, especially the standard wyverns. So the best situation for a wyvern is open in a lot of space. You don't particularly want to be crowded between dense trees. Picking on a wyvern is generally pretty accurate. Like a griffin, you need to pick just before you're about to hit something, not as early as a pteranodon. However, on a wyvern, I find if you're fighting someone else on a wyvern and trying to pick each other, that's when things get a lot harder and can be a lot more buggy, and I often feel like I should have picked someone and it doesn't pick. If you're trying to pick someone else on a wyvern, the trick really is to just to try and move up as you're coming towards each other. Generally, whoever's highest will get the pick. The special ability of the fire wyvern? How did you guess? It can shoot fire. This will deal an initial damage whilst you're shooting the fire. It will then continue to burn whatever you're burning for a few seconds afterwards. Don't get me wrong, if you could use this in a PvP situation, it will be extremely beneficial and a high level fire wyvern. People are unlikely to survive that. However, it's awkward to find yourself in this situation unless someone's in front of you standing still, which they're not. They're going to be running fast on foot or they're going to be flying around you. And this attack doesn't go very far really. If you were PvPing with someone on a Tranodon, for example, you're going to struggle to hit them with this fire. However, if someone's running on the ground and you can just pass along them, it can be pretty easy to hit them with your fire. The Poison Wyvern. If you found it difficult to hit people with a Fire Wyvern, you're in for a treat now. The Poison Wyvern will shoot a ball of poison in the direction you're facing. Now these require some skill. If you're accurate and the target's not moving, they can be pretty accurate. Now if you're good with this and you've got a good level poison wyvern, you can do some real damage. However, once you're flying on one of these guys, they could be a little bit more inaccurate. And really you have to be pretty much touching something to hit it. If you're coming in head on at something, like some kind of bomber plane, they could be pretty effective. But then when does anything really let you just come straight on at it? Using their poison will also take quite a lot of stamina away from them. However, there is a reason why these guys are used a lot. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is because unlike any of the other dinos, you can shoot players off their tame with this. Whereas all the other wyverns will just damage the tame. If you're accurate enough, and I mean you gotta be accurate for this, you can actually shoot riders off the back of their tame. And if you've got a powerful enough poison wyvern, instantly killing them. This can also be used for raiding, similar to basilisks, for just constantly sending poison shots in at someone or something. This could stop people from leaving their base, stop them from getting on a certain tame, or you could even kill their tames with it. All of these attributes make it one of the strongest flies for PvP. However, if you're just starting out, I wouldn't recommend these guys just yet. Now my personal favourite of the three, the Lightning Wyvern. These guys also have a unique and powerful special ability, and I bet you won't guess what it is. They do not shoot lightning from their ass, but instead they do shoot a lightning bolt from their mouth. Again, these aren't the most accurate. If you sat still, they're not too bad. If you're flying around trying to hit something, they could be a little bit more awkward. It's also worth noting that these can also damage friendlies. Also, the length of these lightning attacks are just from one press. You don't hold this, that is just one press. So if you're fighting close to your tribe mates, it can be very easy to hit them sometimes. Furthermore, this is Ark. They can be a bit glitchy. If you're using this attack and jump off your tame and your wyvern is powerful enough, it will kill you. I don't want to talk about it. It's happened many a times and it happens when you don't want it to. Let's just move on. Now I've said the original most common three, but there is an extra one to add to this. The Ice Wyvern. I say this because these guys are a lot less common. You can get them on Ragnarok, but not in the same place. They're a little bit more awkward to find. Unless you play on Valguera a lot, you're not very likely to see one of these guys. But don't get me wrong, these guys look cool. Of course, these guys have a special ability. And of course, you know what it's gonna be. Their special ability is an Ice Breath. This will damage like the fire, not for as long though. Also has a very short range, but it will slow things. And this can be very handy. It slows them for a long time as well. 
I think due to their short range and awkwardness to get, you don't see many of these guys anymore. However, there is no argument that they're still very cool and very useful in the right situation. We're now going to touch on the new meta of Ark, the Crystal Isles Wyverns. So up until now on a PvP server, you'd spawn in, you'd do whatever you need to do, you'd go get yourself a Pteranodon. But all oh, these guys changed the game. If you're on official, low level versions of these guys can be tamed passively just by using crystal. Higher levels require a little bit more work. I've done guides for all these dinos, so I'll put the links in the description for you so you can check them out if you want to tame yourself a high level one. If you're on a boosted server, you ain't got to worry about that, you just use normal crystal. So the first one you're most likely to come across is the tropical wyvern. Now you'll notice that the tropical wyverns are slightly smaller than the original wyverns, and with this it's important to know that they're also more agile. So for their special attack, these guys have a water spray looking thing. Like the fire, it will continue to deal damage after you finish attacking it. But each tropical wire vent has another special boost. The tropical is probably the most frequently used and the best for PvP. And their boost is that when you fly close to water, they'll get a speed buff for 30 seconds. This will reset if you come close to the water again. The speed buff is actually quite a lot. And because of this, if you're chasing people, say on a normal wire vent, you're going to catch up to them fast, and you're more agile, you're more likely to win your fight. Likewise, if you're losing and you have to dip quick, you can just go down to water, get your speed boost, and you can get away quick. So let's talk about, in my opinion, probably the least useful for PvP, the Ember Wire then. Now, I'm going to be real with you. These guys are pretty much just a glorified fire wire then. The only difference is, the more you use the fire in a short time, the more fierce the fire gets, and the more damage it will do. Another great contender for a PvP flyer, the Blood Crystal Wyvern. Look how cool these guys are. With the Blood Wyvern's secondary attack, it will damage enemies and take a percentage of their health and give it back to your Wyvern. This is great in PvP situations if you're fighting against something strong like a Griffin, or if someone's shotgunning you or something similar like that, and it's taking a lot of damage from you. Instead of trying to pick them, you can attack with the secondary attack, and you'll begin healing your Wyvern back up. And finally, the contender that sparks probably the most debate, the Managama. Don't go telling me it's called a Managama. It's a f***ing Managama. Although not technically a flyer, these guys might as well be. They have the ability to jump, as well as dash. This may not make them seem like a flyer, but once you've had some practice with these guys, they might as well be. Now these guys have a normal left click swipe attack. It can be pretty powerful for what they are. They also have a more powerful and more useful attack. Their secondary attack, which has had the range nerfed on it massively, is an ice attack that will freeze enemies. Now it will freeze them so that you can run away, or if you ain't a bitch, you can freeze them and continue to keep killing them. It will hold them there for a good few seconds. Now this can obviously also be used on players, and it is extremely effective. Furthermore, like the Poison Wyvern, on a Managama, you can also target riders off their tames. For example, if you was fighting another mana now, it would be more effective to aim for the rider because if you're accurate enough and you hit the rider enough, it will freeze him and dismount him. The saddle you have on your managama is also extremely important because when fighting another mana, the armor on your saddle corresponds to how long it will take you to freeze. So if you have a really good saddle and the guy you're fighting only has a primitive saddle, you'll freeze his managama long before he'll freeze yours. As well as being extremely strong and effective fighters, these guys can get you around the map really quick. Some servers have begun banning the manners because people complain about how OP they are, and they are, let's be honest. But there are ways to counter manners, and to be honest, these guys aren't actually flyers. If they're going to go up in the air, they have to come down again, so to target something in the air on one of these guys can take a lot of practice. It's also worth noting that unlike most dinos, your managama will regain stamina a lot quicker if you're dismounted on him. If you just sat on him, it will take longer to regain stamina. You can instead dismount and hide behind its wing. This will help protect you from enemies and regain stamina a lot quicker to get you back into the action. And these guys will use a lot of stamina. Now, there are obviously ways to counter every dino on this list. It will take too long to go through every single counter. The best advice I can give is when you come across someone before just going in all guns blazing, just take note on what you're flying and what they're flying. You gotta try and think about the strengths of your flyer and the weaknesses of theirs. For example, I use Tranodons a lot. They're very easy to get and they're very effective if you use them right. 
but wirevans are probably the most common thing to PvP on now, so I always come across wirevans. So I think I'm not as fast as a wyvern, I'm not going to have as much stamina, but I am more agile. So you can always try and play kind of a stamina game with it. You can try and keep baiting him into picking you, and keep ducking and diving left to right last minute. For you to spin round, and for a wyvern to spin round, is a lot of difference, and it's going to take him a lot more stamina. So if they're going to keep getting baited, eventually they're going to need to go down for stem. Or if you've got a lot of health, you can bait him into trying to get you with a secondary attack. He will catch you with it sometimes, but if you've got enough health or a good enough saddle, it's not going to kill you straight away. So every time you leave your base on a PvP server, you want to bring something with you so that you can counter any situation. So I would always bring a whip in case I got picked on a Tyranodon, because you can use that to whip them off their own Tyranodon. I would also bring bowlers, because you've just been picked by a Tyranodon, you've whipped him, and now you're both on the ground. No matter how good someone's Tyranodon is, they'll still get taken out by a simple bowler. And if you manage to bowler the person while they're on the ground, they're as good as dead. If someone picks you on a Wyvern, it is possible to whip them by looking directly up, but it's a lot harder than a Tyranodon. So I always bring a crossbow with grapples in. You can grapple to the bottom of the Wyvern and then cancel your grapple and it will release you from its grasp. This also works the same if you get picked by a Griffin. Whenever I see someone and I think we're going to fight, I always check the level of whatever they're on first because levels make a huge difference. Don't get me wrong, if you're on a Tyranodon and a huge fire breathing Wyvern comes towards you, it can be daunting. But if that Wyvern's only level 50, he can get taken out easy with a couple of shotgun bullets or a good melee weapon. So if you're just starting fresh, you're unlikely to have a good melee weapon, but as soon as you can, I would make a shotgun or something that's going to deal a lot of damage quick, just in case this happens. If someone on a mana attacks you, they're going to have the upper hand. The best thing you can do is bring Plant Z with you. Plant Z works as a flashbang, kinda, and as the mana lands, if you're accurate enough and you throw a Plant Z, it will dismount the rider. This will give you a chance to attack him or get away. I'd probably run away. If someone attacks you on a griffin, Lord, pray that it's a low level or that the guy doesn't know what they're doing because the griffin's going to you up. But really, remember they're not the most agile things and unless they're diving, they're not very fast. Remember, they also don't have a saddle. So if you've got a good weapon or a good tame, you can do a lot of damage to a griffin. Really hope this guide has helped at least someone out. It's not the most in-depth PvP guide in the world, but my aim is to keep my videos relatively short and straight to the point so you get as much information as possible. Now guys, I know you're probably thinking, I wonder if this guy's made any more guides. I've never heard of him. This ain't my first rodeo. So far, I've got over 50 guides up, a lot of quick guides on how to tame things, a lot of how to survive in certain areas, how to still raise certain eggs. So maybe if you're new to the game, or you want to sharpen up on your arc skills, go over and check that out. I'll put the playlist in the description. I'm also going to be bringing out a whole lot of new content this year. So if you want to keep up to date with that, then consider subscribing. And I'm also interested to hear your opinions. Let me know in the comments what your favourite PvP flyer is. You could maybe even share a tip or two to help people out. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.